Who says you can't hurry love? Well, you can hurry love, you know that by now. But if you want the love you've hurried to hang around for a long time and be a great relationship, you have to build romance in at the beginning. Well, first impressions, well, first impressions are the WD-40 of relationships. Romance is the crazy glue. It'll hold you together through thick and thin. And in fact, I call it real love. Romantic, exciting, and long-lasting love. That's real love. Romance is right up there at the beginning. And there's stuff you can learn about great relationships, about how to stay together as well as get together. We, we will point out your mental minefields. I interviewed more than 2,400 people and found certain real truths about it. We're going to talk about those truths today, about falling in love and about staying in love, because they've got nothing to do with each other. They're completely separate events. We're going to talk about what happens when you meet someone for the first time. We're going to talk about why is it that when you're with certain people, you feel drawn to them. This is about behavior. This is not about motivation. We're not talking about motivation. There are plenty of people who've given up looking for dates, uh, who've been bruised and confused and packed it in and been hurt by other people or have been optimist in pessimistic situations. The great truth is you were born with all the skills you need to do this stuff. I just show you how to peel the onion and find out what you knew years ago. It's right in there. I show you concrete steps on, on what to do next in order to find the person of your dreams. And you know what? It's dead easy to come to your mind. The movies have got it wrong. Sure, it sells movies, it looks great. The idea, even the idea of Pretty Woman, great movie, The Millionaire and the Hooker, give me a favor. Never worked, not in a million years. The great thing about romance, romance means story worthy. It's the French word romance. You want to be involved in something where your boyfriend or your girlfriend or whoever does something for you. They use their brain, they figure out something interesting, they do something for you that you want to rush back to the office or to your friends and say, guess what we did last night? And your friends are going to hate you because it was so romantic. Chocolates isn't romantic. A dinner, stuffing your face in a public place is not romantic. All the stuff you see on c cards is not romantic. Rom I'll give you some great ideas on romance in the show. Men and women have got different ideas about romance. A guy might think he's done something romantic by buying you, I don't know, a set of new wing nuts for your car. I don't know. And a woman might think she's done something for a guy by buying him a painting that he looks at and doesn't even get. But there are, there are more basic rules. There are rules for, for, for romance. There are rules for connecting on the right senses with people. We're also going to talk about because you know what? You, there is a book called Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. And you know what? I know John, he got it wrong. There are men and women on Mars and men and women on Venus. And also, he's talking about visual people and kinesthetic people. There are also auditory people. So to be romantic, you have to appeal to all the senses. What you see, what you hear, physical sensation, what you smell and taste well, to some extent. We'll talk about all that because the primary language of the brain, the most memorable language of the brain, is the senses, is, and the senses come in before language. Ooh, we've got a lot to do this week. One of the keys to romance, because everybody is different, but we know that from the beginning. When we talked about, in another episode, we talked about finding your key feeling. Your key feeling is the key to romance with the other person. You cannot be, if, if your key feeling is, let's, well, I'm not even going to spoil it right now, but you can look at, the, we'll talk about that later, but when you look at someone's key feeling, a, what is romantic will be a direct sensory fire to the key feeling of the person. And remember, there are only four key feelings. When you know your own, and when you know that of your partner. Romance, it's like having the shish in your kebab. You've got the shish, all you've got to do is load it up with stuff now. You'll see how to do that. You look at couples who've been married for 20, 30, 40 years, you'll find that, that the, the crazy glue, the, because the, the romance is very important, in the, more important in the beginning of a relationship. Sure, you have to go and do certain things at certain times of the year, but the romance I'm talking about is, is it's like the time you caught the fish, after you've, and it was this big. Ten years later, the fish is this big. It's bigger, it's grown, and that's the kind of romance I'm talking about. The things you have to do that keep relationships together are different. But after 40 years, I guarantee you, they're together and they still exchange their stories with each other. And when the little grandchildren says, Grandpa, Grandma, tell me how you met, that is actually drawing them closer to together. Because the thing about romance is, you know, when you've been married for for 14 or 15 years and you've got kids and, and you're, they've driven you mad because kids basically distort you. Believe me, I know the total age of my children's 182 right now. Uh, but when they drive you nuts and your hand's on the door and you're about to leave, you think, oh, you know what? I may never find a relationship like this again because it's the romance has made it 
bigger, larger than life.